You are listening to the Network Podcast. Welcome back. This is episode six. I'm Andy, aka Escoblades, your host and community developer on Assassin's Creed Initiates. Joining me again is Gabe Graziani, senior community developer on Assassin's Creed Unity. Hi, Gabe. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Really excited to be here. Really, really excited about this guest today. I know, right? This is a great guest we've got on. Uh, for this episode, we're pleased to be joined by Benjamin Blake, who is the lead game designer on Assassin's Creed Unity. Welcome. Yeah, hi. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, ben was kind enough to uh, come on the podcast to talk a bit about the player progression that you'll see in Assassin's Creed Unity when the game launches. And uh, this is obviously a really important topic, so... Who better to have than the guy who's actually in charge of it all? <laughs> We're going to jump straight into the podcast. Um, we'd actually like to get a little bit of an intro to you, Ben, and sort of a little bit of an explanation of how you got to Ubisoft and then eventually onto Unity. So you can go back as far as you like in your history. That's fine. Yeah, well, I was born in born and raised in France. And um, yeah, I think when I was a teenager, I was very interested in video games, of course, and uh, uh, also of uh, animation, you know, Japanese animation. And um, so when I, I went to university, I started to study very different things from uh, actually the video game industry. I wanted to, to work in Japan and uh, to become a French teacher in Japan. So I did some study at university. I learned Japanese. I went there. Uh, I lived in Japan for seven years. And uh, so at the, at the beginning, I was a, a French teacher and also working in random shops. So yeah, I had to uh, to learn the language and all the customs and uh, and uh, I was lucky to to find a job in a translation companies that was also translating video games so I entered the companies and there was a lot of guys working on games and uh, programming and uh, so I start to to get interested uh, with the video game aspect I, I never thought I was able to like uh, work in the game industry actually and uh, so seeing the guys working and creating and uh, you know doing animation of characters i start to to learn from them and uh yeah uh, at the time uh, during a production of this game uh, they, they needed some new guys were able to do some program prog- programming and uh, i i learned some stuff about programming programming with my colleagues so at the time i uh, they decided to 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 let me try to create some stuff and uh, that's when I, I switched from a translation to a video game industry. And after that, so I, I start uh, as a gameplay programmer and then a uh, game designer, uh, lead game designer. I also work uh, as a creative director on uh, different projects. And, uh, and at the end, I was in a, in a, on a project in partnership with Ubisoft. I was still in Japan. Mm. And uh, at the end of my project, uh, I just tried to... Uh, uh, they take a chance to work at Ubisoft Montreal and, uh, and uh, I enter the project. Uh, I, I arrived uh, in Canada uh, almost one year and a half ago uh, working on Assassin's Creed Unity. Yes. That's really cool. I mean, you, you don't often hear uh, of people making the jump from localization, translation to programming. That's and you basically just taught yourself how to program. <laughs> yes. Um, I, I start as translator, uh, so I was uh, Japanese to English or French translator and also I was interested in all the debu- debugging uh, kind of work so I was also uh, dev testing the games Okay. and uh, since the guy programming the game was close to, to my workspace I was always interested of oh how do you make codes and uh, you know I was doing like a kind of overtime and working uh, working late to, to sure. learn stuff because it was interesting and uh, so yeah I was not apparently that bad since they let me uh, integrate <laughs> the, the team of uh, programmers so yes I, I, I learned everything from scratch actually wow that's actually very impressive and it brings up a point that a lot of the guests that we've had from the development side have always mentioned uh, and a lot of devs will tell people who are looking to get into the industry is eventually you just have to get on and do it right just learn you, you, and like you said you you just took the little bit of time that you had to learn how to to program code and stuff and it built it from there yes but is that's that's one of the interesting facts in the game industry is uh, if you are working hard and and i mean you are in a good position and uh, you know meeting the good people at the good time and doing the good moves and uh, and proving you can you can work uh, some people would let you uh, 
uh, your, your, your chance to, to progress and, uh, and to show uh, what you can do. So uh, I was lucky, but it's still uh, a lot of work. I have to, uh, <laughs> to uh, I have to agree with you. It's it's not free. It's uh, yeah, it's time consuming. Yeah. yeah. Oh sure. I mean that's I, I think that's something that we've heard from everyone, right? Is that you know you you you're grateful for the chances that you've gotten in life, but at the same time you also work really hard to make sure that you get the most out of the chances that life gives you, right? Yeah, for sure. And and there is no secret, you know, working in a company like Ubisoft, it's not like a we are, we are doing a lot of great games and uh, it's not free. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's let's go on to the uh, progression system in Unity. You can talk a little bit about this and tell us because obviously we haven't heard all that much about it up until now. And um, it's definitely one of the newer, newer aspects of Assassin's Creed. And so for this next gen Assassin's Creed, tell us a little bit about how player gr- progression is going to work. Yeah. Uh, but Assassin's Creed Unity is um, kind of uh, uh, a new start for, for the brand, you know. Uh, it's a start with the next gen. Uh, we are changing the generation of console, maybe uh, getting new users. And uh, we wanted like uh, kind of uh, go back to the, the roots uh, of the franchise. And so we had to revamp uh, different core gameplays we have in the game and uh, make sure we are just keeping the, the essence of the franchise. And um, so it, it looks like an easy task, but uh, uh, you know we, we had to re- work on, on the engine and uh, and also uh, uh, work on different pillars uh, of the game to make them compliance with uh, with the online. And um, so about about the progression, it's it's true that before you know in Assassin's Creed there was like the multiplayer and the single player so di- di- different experiences uh, controls and progression it was uh, also two different discs so it was two different games and um, of course there was a lot of like interpretation of what the unity stands for in the title but uh, uh, game design wise I have to say for me it's more like uh, the unification of the game system uh, between the, the single player and the um, and the multiplayer uh, because for for the first time so now we you can play with your friends or you can play alone the same character and the same save game the same uh, player progression so um, if you are if you decide to play solo or if you play with your friends you will make progress uh, the same character which is uh, uh, your own version of the main character Arno uh, so yes yeah, it's a, it's a kind of uh, a different way of making progress uh, the, the main character because we also had to think if we are playing with your friends or if you have to play in solo we, you, we still have uh, we still wanted for the user to have the best experience so yes the the, the progression is working in a way that uh, we, we didn't want to 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 make a game uh, single player or multiplayer that's uh, the question that are uh, often coming you know uh, is it like a co-op game or it's a single player game and uh, we prefer to say it's an online game it's overall you can play solo in an online game but you can also uh, join a session with other guys and um, the, w- the way it works in the game is actually the, all the activity you have in the game is, is a, it's, a, it's open world uh, as usually but all the activity can be joined and accessed uh, seamlessly in the same world that means you don't have to enter a complicated menu to select like co-op or multiplayer or single player. The mission giver are there. Some are for a uh, mission you have to do alone. And some are some stuff you can do alone, but also be joined by other players. Well, and you can see when, uh, like, I, I was noticing in uh, a recent, because uh, we, we were doing these demos uh, in New York recently um, for people, and uh, Alex uh, Amancio, the creative director, was demonstrating the like in taverns and things like that you might come across another assassin like another arno basically somebody else's arno sitting in the tavern and that's the indicator to you that they're playing a mission and you can just jump right in we are, we are populating the world in specific place, places uh yeah usually the taverns if we have some other social place uh, when you can see uh, other players or like specific mission givers are uh, here, there are a specific look, specific assassin look, and uh, when you are approaching them, you 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 have the descriptive of the description of the mission, and if you have already a friend playing the mission, you can just join the session. And if you if you are uh, the first one to enter the mission, like your friends are not here, you can also start the mission in private mode, which means you will be 
alone so you can do all the content actually alone in the game and uh, but you can also uh, let the, the matchmaking of the game uh, like playing in public session and the system will find uh, people from the same level of you the same progression of you uh, to enter the session so you won't be alone so i just wanted to quickly touch on something that you mentioned so uh in in the co-op you can be playing on your own um but you can so will there be like a setting that says i don't want to be joined at all you, i think you mentioned private mode that means nobody you won't be joinable but if you let yourself be joined like matchmaking can join other people with you or your friends can just hop into your game at any point in time like if you're playing a mission that requires more than just you well you have several ways to enter a mission actually when all the the, the brotherhood mission that has the, the the mission you can play uh with several users uh you y of course you can already uh, invite some of your friends in your world before starting a mission so you are in free roaming you are inviting your friends you can visit paris together and get some collectibles and find some chests and discover the city of paris wait so there so there's online free roam yes okay wow that's you can invite your friends you can uh, invite three of your friends just to to do some free roam and so if you are already with your friends at this at this time and you you just encounter a mission giver for a brotherhood mission you can just start the mission and they will be with you and and that's it or if you are alone and you are arriving in front of the mission giver you can you you have uh, that kind of um, menu when you can select to play in public to play in private or also to invite people so from that menu, you can just press invite people. You have your list of contact. So you have the, your friends, your recently met player, for example. I, I was saying when you are entering in private mode, of course, you will start the mission with the people already with you. So if you are already in your, in your world with your friends, you will start with them. If you are alone, you will start alone. But when you are in the mission, you can still invite people. And we don't, we don't really have that concept of, uh, like in, in Watch Dogs, for example, that uh, people are invi uh, invading your world and doing stuff against you. It's more like uh, everyone that will be in your world is for sure people you will accept or you will invite. So the player always has the power. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I actually have a follow-up, though, because... Um, so you mentioned that you can start a mission on your own and then invite people. Is there, is there a shift in difficulty? Like, will you, for example, if you start a multiplayer mission solo, uh, is there the possibility that you'll be like, oh, wow, this is way too hard. I can't do this by myself. Actually, in the game, for, for the first time uh, in the franchise, we have uh, a real difficulty ratchet between each mission. That means all the missions are rated on a difficulty level of... Uh, we have five difficulty levels in the game. Mm. And your character has the same uh, level. You can be uh, uh, level one to level five character according to, to uh, the, the progression you had. Uh, I, I will explain about the progression just yeah. after that. But uh, <laughs> you have your equipment and you have also the, the abilities, the skills you will learn in the game. And so, uh, of course, you, we have enough mission for each difficulty levels. So uh, when you when you just start the game and you you reach a mission that, for example, let's say I'm level one and there is a level five mission, for sure the mission will be way too difficult for you. Mm. So uh, we want the player to, to just progress in a way that he will do the, the mission of his own level. Of course, if you have a friend that's already playing the game for two months and uh, is already like uh, level three or four, and you are just uh, playing the game for the first time, it can invite you. Mm. So you will be probably following more than just acting uh, because you, you won't have enough power you know, to encounter the, the, the threat uh, during the mission. But you can still uh, participate. But it's like, you know, in a, in a MMORPG, like uh, you, you can encounter someone at the end of the game and uh, just going with him. For him, it's interesting because he can show you a different stuff of the game and teach you how to play. For you, it's uh, also a, a way to understand uh, how, how far you can go in your progression. And it's also teasing you on the content you will, you will discover later. So we are not like uh, blocking the, the the entry of the mission. You can still join, but for sure we have uh, we, since we we have some online and uh, we have a real player progression. We had to do that kind of uh, gap of difficulty between each missions. It's funny. Actually, reminds me a little bit of uh, previously when we'd have Brotherhood missions. You would like 
you'd be presented with a map of the region that the, ga- the game was talking about, and you would send assassins out. And depending on like the assassins' levels, you would send maybe more than one on a mission. So it's funny, it's like the idea, and I, I, I remember specifically from Revelations, in order to like power level my assassins, I'd send like a really high level one out with a really low level one, because then they get on a, on a difficult mission, because then they get like a bunch of extra like experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's exactly like the same. That's, that's part of the philosophy of Unity. Except now you get to play them. Yeah, when, when, the, when the project starts, you know, it was at just at, uh, after the release of Brotherhood. It was like uh, what takes to do a real Brotherhood game. It actually comes from, from there. Okay. And uh, so the project started four years ago. And that's why it's called the Brotherhood Mission, actually. <laughs> and and um, because people are always asking, like, okay, but what are those mission? It's like uh, other guys? Are you creating separated characters? Is it Arno? Is it, you know, it was kind of confusing. But uh, the way it works is the setting of the French Revolution was, was huge. It's a huge setting. There was a lot of interesting stories and plots and some political facts and very uh, uh, stuff that changed actually the, uh, the, the face of the world almost, you know. We, we have still a, a very strong narrative single player campaign. Uh, we have as much single player content that previous game like Black Flag. And uh, all the Brotherhood missions are additions, and they are still nar- strongly narrative. They are never spoiling. It's more like what the Brotherhood was doing during the French Revolution. And it's very interesting settings, but uh, sometimes it was not very fitting with the main interest of the character. And we don't want the player to, uh, we don't want Arnaud to do stuff that are not very. Uh, you know, linked to his own uh, interest and path. Mm -hmm. So uh, if it was something very political and Arnaud is not interested in politics, uh, we don't want to to force the player to do stuff that are not really related to his his main interest. So we decided to to just picture that kind of uh, historical events in Brotherhood mission. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of side content, but sometimes it's also showing stuff. I mean, doing the, the overall, doing all the missions of the game uh, for, for sure will reveal some stuff, you know, it's just, uh, uh, but everyone will play Arno actually in the game. It's not like you're creating uh, different characters, but uh, since now we have, a, we have a strong progression and customization system, you can select your equipment and uh, it's the visual and the, the uh, you can change the color of your outfit al- also. So when you are playing with a friend, you will still play Arno, but its own version of Arno. And we are giving kind of uh, the ownership of the main character uh, of, the, of the game. Let's move on to the skills you mentioned the skills and i know obviously uh the, the the pillars now you have the stealth you have fighting you have navigation so tell us a little bit more about the skills that people will be able to progress and i guess how how that affects their gameplay you know very early in the production we realized that the best way to uh, to make uh, the game interesting in co-op is uh, to to have some complementarity in your play style to not have everyone the same character and the same uh, the same uh, abilities. So we decided to to just give the choice to the player to select in which way we want to progress first. So we divided like the core pillars of the fi- uh, of the game. For example, the fight or the stealth or the navigation, the assassination, and uh, kind of removing all the abilities that make an assassin. And during the progression of of the player, you you will finish some mission and you will receive some points, sync points. And the sync points will allow you to, to purchase, to buy actually in, in a menu, uh, some skills. So it's not like you are creating, uh, you are selecting a class. You're not selecting like the brawler or the, or the stealth guy. Uh, you, you have a, a menu with, a, with all the, the skills of the game. Some, some are costing uh, two points, some maybe eight, ten points. So uh, according to your progression and the number of missions you will do, you will have several points to allocate to the skills. And uh, so you have to choose which one you want to, to get specialized first. So uh, that, wa- that, that can it's up to you to create a character very strong in attack or very uh, silent. So the way we, the level designer, work on the project is uh, um, a concept we call the 360 approach. 
which is actually you have a, a main target. Let's say, uh, let's say it's uh, you. You have the, your main target in the game. You have to to assassinate, and you are drawing circles around. And we are making sure that on that circle, for sure, you also have you always have a navigation opportunity, a stealth, or a fight. So uh, and of course, the different it's different path with different secrets inside. Uh, sometimes you have uh, some hidden secrets or collectibles uh, on your way. And um, so if you are, if I'm f guy very strong in fight, I would just face the opponent and try to kill them, and I can pass fighting. And uh, if I have a friend that is more specialized in stealth because he selects some stealth abilities, uh, it will probably ask me, oh, you know, there is a pass on the right, you don't know because I have the lockpick level 2, and you don't have the lockpick level 2. Let me, let me open the door, and you will open the door, I will maybe discover a different way to play the mission. So, um, with a 360 approach, we are making sure that there is always enough uh, opportunities for the player and uh, different ways to, to achieve the mission. Because it's also, you know, uh, doing co-op, the funny part is the, also the replayability of the mission. So, uh, since I'm not playing the same way, uh, if I'm playing with different guys and they will say, oh, you know, I can, I can just go on the roof because I'm very good in navigation and I can so uh, sabotage the uh, alarm bell. So uh, we'll be safe for the rest of the mission. There is a different, like, it's not like secrets, it's more like, for, for us, we know because we are producing the game, <laughs> but uh, we are quite sure that uh, the fans will be very happy to say, oh, you know, uh, there is a different way to do that. And uh, we, are, uh, we are always uh, making sure we have some checklists, you know, permissions, like uh, we, we have to do uh, at least uh, several features for each kind of gameplays. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's a lot of work on uh, the complementarity. That's actually exciting for me because um, a, a little bit of a story. Normally when we play with Gabe uh, on previous <laughs> Assassin's Creed, uh, on the multiplayer, he's the lookout guy. He's always on the roof. That's his specialty. So it's great to see that he can he can play to his strengths. That was not a compliment <laughs> in the original multiplayer. That was not a compliment for me. He used to call me a roofer. <laughs> But he, he'd be the one who'd be able to see everything if it was on our team. He'd be able to call things out. I, I like that there's going to be that sort of tactic, right? That yeah. somebody, if, for instance, I'm really good at free running, that's the one thing that I'll be relied on for my team to do. It's like, look, I can reach that window quicker than anybody here. You guys keep a lookout. You pick the lock. I'll go and do this. Yeah, then but that's, really, that's, that's why when people are asking, yeah, is there is a, some class in the game. Are you forced to select some class? No, it's, a, it's like an open class. And it's uh, open to your own play style. So, for example, if I'm, I really like the fight, I don't like free running, but I like to see everything in the game. I can just, uh, you know, uh, select to upgrade my eagle sense at the maximum. So I can still be uh, uh, on the floor, but just being able to spot the snipers on the roof. And so, you know, you, it's kind of. Uh, you, you can get specialized on each pillar or you can also be a mix of everyone or just two or three or you know what's your what's your favorite me i have to say i really like to play stealth um, that's we we did a lot of improvement uh, improvement on each pillar for unity but uh, um, for example now we will really have a button for the stealth mode you know, before you you had the high profile mode when you can run. And now we you are really have the low profile mode. So you press a button and you are in stealth. You are crouching, and it's really it looks like nothing like this. But you know when you play and you press the button and you more you are more like stealth. You really have the we I I feel like we are giving the tools to really play the entire scope of the game stealth if you want. And um, it's not that that was not the case before but before it was more driven by the ingredient of the world the level design was driving oh here there is a stealth opportunity now it's more like you have to take your time yeah actually uh, tactics on unity is way more important than before it's it's maybe better now to just to wait some time on a you know on a corner or on a rooftop and look the control path you know of the guards and understand about uh, how to use your tools to attract people on, on a way or another to create some opportunities messing with the world you know i found myself doing that in black flag too actually like i'd go unarmed so you just choke them out <laughs> 
they're still alive they're still alive yeah, <laughs> yeah you can you can do that kind of uh, non-lethal pass uh, non-lethal playthrough we have we have several types of weapons also and uh, we have a category of weapons that has a, the blunt weapon like non-lethal weapon so uh, it's just for the nice assassin <laughs> and uh, it's like when you are in stealth mode you have you have two different ways you can assassinate with your hidden blade uh, hidden blade or you can just choke the guy and because actually you are choking the guy yeah. and when he's almost like uh, collapsing you are just for free giving a, a punch in his face like uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like <laughs> Sure. Yeah, 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 just to just to make sure, like a, a yeah, a free punch for, for fun. It's cool. Actually, you mentioned weapons and I guess tools as well. So obviously, skills you can upgrade. Yes. I'm guessing there's a whole variety of weapons and and upgrades for those as well, right? Yeah, but the the what defines more the the player progression in in Unity is, is we have kind of two different axes of progression, which is the skills and your equipment. So as I was explaining, the skills is more like abilities to do uh, specific actions. So like lock picking a door or blending in, in small uh, uh, amount of crowd. You know, you, you, we have a dense and massive crowd now in the game. Everyone already saw that, but there is some uh, some ingredients in the game, uh, like um, uh, s small group of people like doing doing stuff, like you know, cleaning the streets and. Uh, uh, you can unlock the, the ability to, to blend with them, so you will uh, kind of do the same kind of actions. Wow. Sweeping. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so the ability to blend with that kind of people, or... Uh, um, so you, you, we have different skills, and uh, it's also sometimes like you, you can have different types of weapons, so you can uh, use uh, the sword, of, uh, or two-handed sword, or uh, long weapon, or rifles, where different categories and actually they are not exactly playing the same with the, the with the pad uh, like uh, the long weapon by well, of course not the same as animation but uh, you, you can get specialized for example in long weapon and we have a, a new kind of attack called the strong attack if you are just pressing for longer on the button and releasing the button you will do for example with a sword very strong attack um, and uh, for example, with the with the long weapon, it will just uh, sweep the leg of the. Yeah, so it's different. You can just unbalance the guy, uh, the guy, and so you so you have the normal s ability to use long weapon, and you have long weapon mastery, which is uh, another level, uh, giving you uh, more moves. And so you can get that's, that's a way to get specialized in fact actually uh, in fight actually, and same thing with the bombs. You at the beginning you don't have access to all the bombs. You have the the most iconic bombs like the smoke bomb, but there is some bombs like a poison, poison bomb or uh, we have the the, the, st the stun bomb, stun bomb that can get used in uh, it's kind of flashbang. So you you are using that most of the time uh, in uh, in fight when uh, there is too many guards around you and you don't want to escape. Because the smoke bomb is, uh, of course, it, it's more uh, for escaping, and the flashbang is more like an uh, uh, offensive tool. So uh, it's part of the progression of the fight. We are separated the, the appearance of the of the character in uh, five different slots, which is uh, the hood, the coat, uh, the the leg part, the forearms, and the belt. And uh, so we have uh, almost 200 different pieces of equipment uh, with different uh, level. So when I talk about level, is uh, it's something new again. Is it's not just about the look. There is some patterns attached to each part. So for example, I can get specialized in eagle sense because I unlocked some eagle sense skills. But the radius of my eagle sense, the length of my eagle sense, and the thing I, I can discover with my eagle sense can be improved by, for, ex for instance, my hood. So if you have a level 1 hood and a level 5 hood, it will be totally different. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, we have several themes in the game. So you have more medieval style outfit, or more uh, revolutionary outfit, or assassin badass outfit, or rogue outfit. And uh, everything can be mixed, which means I can have a rogue hood with a medieval plate and a revolutionary uh, 
uh, legs, you know, and um, so you can actually craft the character your way the way you want. And when I'm talking about, for example, the the rogue the rogue coat will uh, allow you to blend uh, very uh, like faster in the crowd, like it will be like a instant blend. And if I have uh, the medieval coat, which is not actually a coat, but more like an armor, I will be better in defense. I will be able to take some some gunshots, and uh, you know, but the way I will blend will be more. Uh, it will be more difficult for me to blend. It will take more time. So uh, it's always like we have two main parameters on each part. For example, why the, the blend is uh, the perfect example. It's defense or stealth. And um, so yeah, it's, it's also part of the progression when the, the player will 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 discover the city of Paris. You know, we have the interiors, we have the undergrounds. It's kind of massive and like a multi-layer city. Uh, according to the activity we will do, we will sometimes discover items. So uh, it's more like uh, we are kind of embracing the, the RPG approach for for this game. It's more like okay, uh, I will. I will go to a sewer and maybe I will find a chest and it's a lockpick two chest and I will open the chest and inside there is I don't know a specific uh, like a bracer that allows me to have more uh, darts you know so you can select different types of equipment and you can select the color and uh, you say you are not selecting the color for each part but you are se selecting the color of the overall so let's okay. say you, you want to be uh, we, we don't want really the player to to create a rainbow character <laughs> so uh, it's more like uh, you're selecting red and you will be red and uh, that's the secret for for us to to be sure that your character will always 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 be badass <laughs> it will always look like a, an assassin because that's important that's yeah. important Gabe, Gabe will tell you the same thing uh, I'd want it to match yeah. and yeah. I, I'd, I'd want maybe a dark blue and all black yeah, yeah, yeah. proper stealth assassin because that's a uh, that's uh, that was uh, what well, something we were worried at the beginning like okay giving ownership it's uh, also giving the uh, the opportunity for the player to kind of uh, create a weird assassin mm -hmm. and we still want it for the player to to feel like it's it's working it's, it looks like an assassin and uh, so that's the secret actually well, it's funny because I was like I had thought about it coming from the opposite direction, right? Like you'd mentioned earlier, like in MMOs and things like that. Like when I think about the worst thing that could happen to me in an MMO, and this is I'm gonna illustrate how like my vanity here because I'm super vain about my characters. But if I get like a piece of armor and I'm wearing like all like dark blue or you know whatever like all all green or whatever and then I get like a piece of armor that is just that just does not match at all like it's it's bright yellow or something it just doesn't match that that drives me nuts right and and I'm like I just I need I need to match like I'm going for a look here right? like but it's good to know that that will not be <laughs> that will not be a huge concern <laughs> um I do have one final question uh, and I'm just going to go back to bombs because that's actually fairly important. I know I'm not sure if it had been touched on before, but for the benefit of those who didn't know, bombs are returning. The variety of bombs. Can you tell us sort of roughly how many bombs there will be in the game? We have the smoke bomb, the, the money pouch, the poison bomb. We have the stun bomb. We have the cherry bomb for our tracking guards and. And that's it. After that, you have some health potion or medicine, you know, to uh, to revive. Uh, I mean, to uh, to fill your life bar. And uh, we have several types of darts because now we have a new iconic weapon, the Phantom Blade, that can throw like uh, blades that kills, and also berserk berserk darts okay. to make uh, everyone crazy. Those are yeah, great. yeah, and uh, that's it. And uh, yeah, we have lock picks also, but it's not a bomb. <laughs> All right, awesome. Well, uh, that's that's. Thank you so much for coming on and yeah, talking all about it. It's that's been a wealth of information to take away. Um, as we normally do at this point, we invite you to 
let the v- listeners know if you have any social media that they can follow you on like twitter or i don't really have a twitter you account okay. you don't okay we're, we're batting two for two now it's like travis last time didn't yeah travis didn't have any too it makes it makes my life so much easier, easier. <laughs> <laughs> trying to manage this trying to manage the social media and stuff and then we have developers just like wait and another thing <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, stop. okay well there you go so benjamin isn't on any social media that you can follow but assassin's creed is so gabe would you like to take us through the assassin's creed social media sure we're on twitter at uh twitter.com slash assassin's creed or at assassin's creed no apostrophe all one word um we're also on facebook at facebook.com slash assassin's creed instagram instagram.com slash assassin's creed uh where else are we we're on google plus you will have to search for assassin's creed on google plus because we don't have a vanity url yet <laughs> But yeah, I think I think that's the run of it. And that's a, oh, Tumblr, we're on Tumblr. Oh, oh yes, can't forget Tumblr faithful. Yeah, yeah, look for us on Tumblr. Okay, and AC Initiates. Obviously, we have a Twitter at AC Initiates, all one word. YouTube.com slash AC Initiates. Uh, Instagram as well, Instagram.com slash AC Initiates. And uh, you can listen to the podcast on YouTube, SoundCloud, and iTunes. Feel free to subscribe to us at all of those places. We'd love it. Feel free to leave comments as well. Uh, So that's it for us. Thank you for listening. Uh, Take care, stay safe, and bye for now.